now that i'm interviewing you i think i, I should have worn my glasses and you know the reason why i would have done that because amongst your many achievements one of them is is the pioneer of bringing the sunglasses into cricket isn't isn't that correct pretty much so it's um yeah well i was lucky enough to have um you look quite cool in those hope they're oakley <laughs> oakley sunglasses uh, <laughs> no i don't get paid by oakley so no oakley either do i but i do get them <laughs> but um no the sunglasses were an interesting thing uh, it yeah. was perth is the major problem in the kill and Hmm. um and you got the wind and the glare and all that type of stuff and and Alan hmm. Border was a past baseballer and and I hmm. said to a Alan I said I'd like to wear sunglasses here because I get absolute I get really that's why I used to wear the zinc I used to get smashed with the sun zinc cream oh yep. shocking and I've, I always used to cover up with the long anyway so I and I found the white ball in the bright blue sky at Perth particularly quite difficult hmm. to pick up So I asked him if he could do it. I like, could I put them on. So I just walked into a um a surf shop, believe it or not, and I was trying all these ones on. No, nope, didn't like that brand, didn't like that brand, didn't oh, I like these. I bought I just went and bought them. And mm. I trained with them for two days. Then I and I said to AB, can I wear them? And he said, "Yep. But make sure you catch the first one." <laughs> so you would have believed it. I was on the boundary. in perth and i can't remember who it was but anyway and i'm looking straight into the sun and the breeze and the wind the, the doctor was whacking yeah. me and i was yeah. getting sledged by my own crowd they were chirping me big time <laughs> and at, at perth you learn one thing and i've learned it at training when they hit the ball in the air you yeah. don't run in to get it you let the wind in the natural thing for the ball to come to you you learn that's the only ground in the world where you do And okay. normally you, you see the ball and you tend to run in, but you always stay still to let it come to you. And for this reason, I don't know why, but it, I saw it and I looked for spin on the ball, believe it or not. If I see it spinning like that, that means it's going to fall short of me. If I spin, see it spinning the other way, the ball will go wow. up and you can sit deep. So you've got to watch the rotation of the ball. And I knew it wasn't going to get to me if I stopped it because of the glasses. and I started running in against everything I taught myself and I took a bloody good catch and I threw it in and when I came back to field there after we got the wicket everyone on the boundary was wearing their sunglasses and all giving me the thumbs up so I, I okay. wonder what would it, I wonder what what would have happened if I dropped it would we be wearing sunglasses you don't see the T20 world cup happening uh, why do you say so Okay. This year, I mean, um, not this year. Yeah. Well, it, it's not going to happen in Australia for a lot of reasons. Firstly, cricket mm. Australia is um, retrenched a lot of people. So okay. when you've got sixteen teams here, and probably between thirty and forty persons per team, including staff and players and and administration, um, we're not going to be able to do it. And okay. to put them in hubs and and to work making sure the COVID restrictions were quite heavy here. and cricket australia does not make or the host country does not make much money at all with right. world cups they used to but not now under the under the rules so where do they make the money now of course they're talking about uh us dollars 220 million us dollars we will make on a on a full indian tour here the four tests right. and, and uh right. the one day is and australia's in a bit of a pickle like all the other cricket Yeah. countries in the world and they're trying to protect their prime space and I think they can handle mm-hmm. India uh but I don't think they can handle 15 different countries okay. in India Okay fair enough now now since you talk about an India Australia tour and looks like that that might happen as things stand at the moment and we know it's the mother of all series right now with, with the uh, amount of interest that that's in Australia and India uh first thing we were talking about steve smith returning to to cricket we know that his two year ban for that captaincy is also over would you then think it would be the right time and now that he's had a bit of a break to to bring him back as as the all fo- uh, format captain that australia always likes to have um no because i think tim paine's done a magnificent job anyway um oh. first thing question we i think we should ask here nikhil is would oh. steve smith want to do it Well, you know, would he Fair want enough. to captain yeah. again? We haven't really asked that question, you know. We're just mm. assuming. And I'll tell you one thing I've learned as a coach. You don't assume the players know because they don't half the time. So 
We're assuming that he would like the job. Okay. Yeah. But that's the question. Second question, second part to your question, does he fit into your best T20 team? Mm. In the Good best point. Australian T20. Yeah. If that's the case, well, maybe. But Aaron Finch has done a great job anyway, what he's done with the, with the white ball. So pretty hard to, um, to move him around. See, see my point, okay. I don't think he's a big hitter of the ball. So he, sure. he's a very good player at number four in T20 cricket that fits in there and, and does a good job. Hmm. Two for 20, he, he, he takes it over. But is he the player that you want to want Australia to come in if Australia won for 80 off seven? He's probably not. You hmm. probably want to have the Maxwells and the other hitters coming in. So where does he quite fit into that's the fine. team? So that, that's basically where he's at. But my, my, my point is this. Well, I think David Warner... And I'll compare to both here. What well, he's done very, very well over the last bit, couple of years, is it because he's been unbelievably fit. He is mm. just an animal, the way he's got himself so fit and trim. <laughs> and I think at the time, Steve Smith shows fatigue a little bit in the last year or so with his body. Now, mm. whether he's been training right, putting the right supplements in his body, all that type of stuff, well, drinks and all that type of stuff, that's got to be worked out. But I feel that he could be fitter. Now, he said he's got himself fitter than ever yeah. he has before. Hardly yeah. picked up a bat. So I'm really looking forward to seeing actually how he goes because he's different. He holds the bat differently. Um, yeah, that's true. Bats, he, well, if you actually look at Bradman to him, they actually bat very similar. Both got split grips. Both got a funny bottom hand grip. They go back and across. Bradman was the same, yeah, and they worked the ball square, and they hardly hit the ball straight down the ground. They hit everything square and third man and fine leg, and they very have an unbelievable eye that can pick up the ball and length of the ball. So yeah. he's different, and I'd, I still okay. say to this day, you've got Coley, you've got Kane Williamson, uh, you've got uh, Joe Root, Steve Smith. We'll talk about Bubba a little bit later on. They're all got yeah. split grips. We don't teach this to kids. Why don't we uh, teach this to kids? I know, you're, bizarre, you're so the like professor. something we need to look at. Hmm. Yeah, you're the professor, you're the coach as well. Maybe something that you can look at. And the other thing that, that I found rather strange is, is another comment by Michael Clark, where he said that maybe in that series, and I'm just looking at reasons, you know, why Australia couldn't perform as well as they have at home in most times. He thought maybe in that series, a lot of players were just being too nice, uh, you know, just so that they could secure the IPL contracts and being nice to Virat Kohli and co. I mean, I've never known any Australian team to be like that, no matter what the situation. What, what did you make of those comments? I'll tell you the, the reason why yeah. the Australians yeah. went to go silent to him. Yeah. And it's this. We went silent to Viv Richards. Mm -hmm. uh, we went silent to Jav and me and Dad. We, we go silent to Martin Crow when he came into bat. And there's a reason for mm -hmm. it, because we know through ourselves, if someone's have, you're feeling a bit down and, oh, there's not much in the pitch and there's nothing going on and all of a sudden someone's had a snipe at you a little chat and all of a sudden then all of a sudden um, you, you lift your ear, ears up and said oh you got something to say we saw it in the Michael Jordan last dance he'll pick on yep. a fight just to get himself up and we know that you don't upset the bear, you don't upset Virat Kohli <laughs> and you don't upset you know, Adoni you don't upset certain players because this is what they love. They want this confrontation. So don't give them any oxygen. And there are, I can't tell you, it must be a hundred times where we've actually bowled the ball to Merv, uh, to Merv particularly to um, Viv, play a miss, and we give it a, oh, oh, and say nothing. <laughs> Can you believe that? Because we, did, we don't want him to be up. And it does work. Yeah. And there's something in that. You don't upset certain guys there are other certain guys you can get into fine but i don't yeah. i don't i find that as a bit rubbish with the oh he, he upset for okay. a and he won't pick you like really is Virat okay. going to stop you from playing <laughs> it's actually no, not it all. comes down to the coaches and the and the, and the list managers doesn't yep. it? who they pick yeah yep. yep. so, yep. also also Virat, Virat doesn't control all the ipl teams at best even let's say even if he had some say it would be just with his particular IPL team, but clearly not uh, mm. what happens with other teams. Okay, let's now turn our attention to, to Pakistan cricket because you've been involved yeah. with the PSL for, for a few seasons now. And I'll talk about Babar Azam, as I said earlier, because he's part of your squad at Karachi Kings too. He's now been given the, the white ball captaincy in Pakistan. How do you see him go there? 
Yeah, I, I, I think you do very well. Um, I still think he, that they need a little bit of he needs a little bit of help in where he wants to go. And and I've had a, mm. a, a few good talks with him about, and I'm showing what I do with with my team at Karachi, which he's a vice captain of, if you want to call it that. And I said, this is how yeah. I prepare for each team. And he was a little bit blown away uh, to the nth degree of the analytics that I get into. Uh, mm-hmm. And I said, this is what, you know, when you're, when you're captain of Pakistan and you're coming against India, you've got to work out how and how are we going to beat them. And once you work your game plan out, then pick your team accordingly. And then mm-hmm. you've got to sell that game plan to the players. It's up to you to sell it. And they've got to believe in it. Uh, there is this raging debate in India. In fact, in world cricket, who's the better white ball batsman between Virat Kohli and Rohit Sharma? We spoke about, you know, the top batsman in the world at the moment. But I'm just looking at white ball cricket. Would you, in that race between Virat and Rohit, also play someone like a Babur? Because what, he's an ICC ranking number one in T20, number three in ODI. So, you know, averaging 50 plus in both those formats. Oh, they're all great players. Gee. And, and in a way, that. You're only as good as the guys you're batting with as well. Um, mm. You know, that, that's that's a big thing, you know. And, and, and to be honest, outside Baba, there's no one been consistently making big runs at all in Pakistan, has there? So True, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, in all the formats where you look at in India, that's always Rowett or there's Vrat or there's someone, um, Pujara or someone making runs somewhere, there are, someone's putting their hands up doing their job, you know. Yeah. Uh, they're a lot more settled as a team. Um so the, but uh, the only thing well, I think improvement can come from Baba is that his power game needs to just get a bit better. Uh, oh. He needs to hit more fours and sixes a little bit more in T20 cricket. Uh, the other style, like, we're very fortunate enough. You and I, we, we, we go to the media box and we, we go on cricket. And when there's certain batsmen go out to bat, whether it be a one-day game or T20 or, or, or a test match, we... we there are certain guys who get a cup of tea and I'll, I think I'm going to get a cup of tea or get something out of the canteen or something like that. When he goes into bat, everyone's watching. When Baba Azam is batting, everyone's mm. watching. It's just so good to see a technically perfect player the way he goes. Mm. But he's got to put the runs on the board. You know, Coley yeah. and these guys have got thousands upon thousands upon thousands of runs in all forms of the game. He's just starting. The kid's just starting. Uh, but what we see so far, so good, and he's bloody good to watch, and he's fantastic. I tell you what, he, he's his work ethic. Oh, he, he can't hit enough balls. He's following the the, the thing of Virat Kohli getting in the gym. And he's smashing himself in the gym. Okay, he has a tendency to get a little bit too light with Kohli's big and strong. He's got to get a little yeah. bit stronger. But um, and a terrific kid to work with. Just a terrific mm. kid to work with. Uh, last couple of questions, and this is with regards to your cricketing career and two mysteries that you'll help me solve. The first one, which was the biggest mistake of your cricketing career? Uh, asking Kirtley Ambrose to remove those uh, sweatbands or, or sledging, uh, uh, you know, uh, Richard Hadley uh, just, just before a test series and saying that he's an ordinary bowler and then him getting you out four times, which was the bigger mistake? Well, we all know about the Kirtley one. It was a mistake, of course. Um, I, first, I never sledged Richard Hadley. I, I, I just said I'm trying to, to treat him like an ordinary bowler because I know he's not. And, of course, he got me out a few times and the Queen heard about it and they knighted him. So there you go. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, we have a bit of fun. I had him for Christmas at my place again uh, during the Boxing Day Test match. Yeah, it good fun. He, you know, he gave me a bunny yeah. rabbit and all that type of stuff. Anyway, um, the biggest regret, probably, I probably shouldn't have retired so early in one-day cricket. Um, yep. That, that's probably the biggest one. I retired yeah. in 94 when I was 32 years of age. And, yep. But back yep. then, you weren't the complete player unless you played both forms of the game. And I've yep. already been out. My last game as a test cricketer, I have 52 tests and an average of 47, I was finished at 30. I was never getting picked again. Yeah. God, like now they'll be naming captain. But, but, <laughs> but the fact is, oh, that's True. the difference in standards now. But, True. But, True. Then, but then I wasn't given the love or respect, I think, 
as a one day player and I actually tried to push the boundaries a little bit too much from 30 to 32 and they didn't yeah. play that well um, because I was trying to prove myself because I didn't have that opportunity in test cricket and I got a couple of rough decisions in South Africa and they um, and they dropped me can you believe I was ranked number two or, or three in the world at that stage and they dropped me for the last game so back then the 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 selector will make a, a decision along with the coach, along with the captain, the vice captain, and the senior player. So five selectors. And all mm. five of them voted against me not playing the last game. And all four of those players weren't good enough to do my sh- bootlaces up in one-day cricket, and yet they <laughs> voted for themselves to play for themselves. I thought, it's just a ridiculous system. Ridiculous yeah. system. And so I said, well, there are only boys picking their boys. So I said, that, yeah. that's enough. And I was actually earning more money playing state cricket than I was playing for my, my country at that stage. And nothing, I've already won a World Cup. Um, we missed out in the World Cup in 1992. The next World Cup is in 95, and they're not looking for me for that now. They've dropped me in 94. They're not going to be playing me now. So I look for other options to do. And, and in a way, I probably should have hung on a little bit more and just keep playing one-day cricket. But, mm. you know, I, I, just, I was done at 32, believe it or not. I was done. Okay, finally, and, and I can't let you go without, uh, you know, talking about that tight test match in Chennai. And as sure. I said, I've heard every, every story from there. Uh, but, but there's this one mystery that I, I've never been able to solve. Maybe you could help me do that. And, and that relates to Greg Matthews. He, he had a fine game, probably could have been man of the match. Uh, That's for his best his game in his career, without doubt. Should have been man of the match, yeah. Yeah, but the, the one thing I could never understand in that heat where you were dehydrated and you had to be put in a nice bucket, had to be taken to hospital, that gentleman was wearing a cardigan while bowling in what, 38 degrees heat with 90% humidity? I mean, could you solve that yeah, for us? Jumper. Yeah, he wore a sleeveless yeah. jumper. Yeah, yeah. Why, why did he do that? He is a bizarre individual. <laughs> yes. Because you know what it is, it's it, it, it five days of un- amazing game of cricket. And it's sad that the today's generation can't see that because Dordeshan yeah. taped over the tapes. So we haven't got been able to see any or the or the whole match. Could you, you well, is that so? Yeah. Is yeah. that oh yeah. so the They're archive footage Mm. Oh, the archive footage with Doordarshan has been, uh, you know, re-recorded with something else? Yes. Yeah, the master tapes have been re-recorded, and that's what they did back there. 1961 tight test, we see every ball. We've got every ball of it. ABC, mm. you've got that. But um, And it would be good to show them how tough. I tell you, the last day, I remember it pretty well because there's some sledging in that. Oh, my Lord. You just have to look on the highlights on YouTube, how much was going on. There was... Um, Players were actually had the bat up. The Indian players were going to hit someone. Alan Border was told to get off the ground for time wasting. There was, oh, there was send offs. It, it, it was, and then of course Greg tried to get in the heads because he is a bit cuckoo in the best of times. Um, <laughs> he's weird. He's a weird person. All off spinners are, but uh, <laughs> he, he's actually look at Murley for God's sake. Um, a guy that I love him. Um, the dairy was in front of the Indian dressing, uh, Indian dressing room. All your boys are, oh, God, it's hot. It's hot. And then here's Greg Matthews saying, jeez, it's cold. I've got to put a sleeveless jumper on. And he's bowling with that. And yeah. He's always doing yeah. this. You know, and it's, anyway, that's, that's what had happened. But he, he played. He got 10 wickets for the match. I think he made 70 yeah. runs as well and took a couple of catches. But yeah. uh, just to finish off with, that, with this particular yeah. match, yeah. we had to travel within one hour after the finish. Can you imagine this happening today to get on a plane at Madras to fly to Hyderabad? And when we got to Hyderabad, now we mm-hmm. haven't had a drink for six weeks. Back in mid-80s, you can't have a drink anywhere in India unless you sign off you're an alcoholic. So <laughs> this is true. And they had a new, I can't remember the name of the hotel, but it's right next to a lake or a, something. Anyway, in Hyderabad. We got off the plane. And this brand new hotel, there was 30 waiters holding a bottle of Verve Clico champagne. 30 of them. Tied test wow. match, press everywhere. And David Boone got off the bus and we all looked at these beautifully dressed waiters with holding this bottle of champagne all the way up the stairs to the room. And, uh, and David says, it's a mirage. Don't look at it. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> it can't be happening. I said, well, I think it is yeah. happening. So we... Both teams piled in into this room 
And the manager was going around saying, all the drinks, all the drinks are on us. Compliments the hotel, compliments the hotel. So, oh, so we've had a few drinks on having a drink with Sunny Gavaskar and, and, uh, and, and uh, Ravi and, and Meninda Singh. It was just really cool. It really was. I'd speak to Jimmy Armanath, all this type of stuff. And I never really got to know those guys, and now I do. So mm. at the end of the night, which was a long night, just, just <laughs> the two teams, I can imagine. Yeah. Our manager got up out of his room to get the paper off the front door, and there was this small slip stuck underneath the door. And it said, compliments the hotel. It was $7,500 for the drink bill. <laughs> they billed it. <him laughs> so they were saying it was for drinks. And we only got paid on that tour for three and a half months. I'm talking US wow. dollars. Three and a half thousand dollars for that three months. We, that's all we got paid in 1986. But it's the best tour. We learned how to play spin. We learned how to deal with heat, playing with yeah. sweat. And we learned so much about ourselves because we were a young team. Uh, I think it was 145 test matches in our team compared to India had 550 test matches. There's a lot of experience in that Indian team. Yeah. And, uh, mm -hmm. and then the following year, we ended up winning the World Cup because, because of that experience that we had in India the year before. And we learned so much. Steve Ward developed this change-up slow ball. And uh, it, we and everyone just knew that they did well in India at some stage, and and I think it just progressed into the World Cup when we got the chance. Yeah, and you won a lot of Indian fans as well because I remember a lot of them cheered for you when you won the World Cup at Eden Gardens. It was as if Australia were the home home team. Thank you, Dino, so much for sparing time talking to us. Uh, you know, in this lockdown and. Uh, May you always be 52 years of age. You've been that for the last seven years, if I'm not Bye -bye. mistaken. Bye -bye. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I okay, on that take note. care. Hope to once see you. Get past, once you get past the days, that's enough. But thanks, mate. Really good talking to you. And, and uh, Same I'm just here. looking through all the, all the messages, uh, Rupert and all that type of stuff. Thanks for listening. It's been a lot of fun. Good stuff. Yeah. Thanks, Professor. Take care. I'll see you soon you. once you're here in India when cricket starts.